morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And speaking of quality of life, we have Dr. Thomas Palucky here again today. He's a local chiropractor. Thanks Welcome. for having me back. Yes. And what are we talking about today? Oh, what we're always talking about. Oh, well, what is that? <laughs> well, trying to give people the best quality of life, especially as seniors. Um, Dr. Dorio and I share some patients and... Um, Even though we have different backgrounds, we have a similar philosophy when it comes to taking care of our patients. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is not necessarily commonplace, which is kind of disturbing. And and not that it's not that it's uncommon how we practice, but what I believe how we practice had been the way practices were and now are not that way anymore. And the factor, the big factor is T-I-M-E, time. Time is not given to listen to patients in any community anymore in this country. Yeah, time is a a big factor. Asking the right questions, Mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, is the most important thing in a establishing uh, a best possible outcome for a new patient. I'm not that impressed with most diagnostic technologies. I've seen them all uh, be (coughs) be misrepresented of what is really going on with the patient. And that is the art of really being a doctor is being able to talk to someone and find out what is really going on with them. And unfortunately, that's a lost art form for so many, so many doctors these days who are under ridiculous time constraints in order to get that person through the system and um, basically just listening for buzzwords to check off a box and send out for a test or write a prescription for the most popular medication being pushed on them right away so but uh, that's that's the doctor's doing though well it's no, the, because doctor's the doctor the it's doctor business. could spend more time not in most settings they can't not anymore. why not in most settings money yeah greed it's not just wait, 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 I'm not wait, talking wait. about oh, the doctor. Oh, I'm talking about the s- the setting that they're in. Unless they're in exclusively private practice, unless they are in exclusively concierge medicine, which means that that patient is paying that doctor instead of some other agency paying that doctor. The doctor has very tight constraints of <coughs> what they can and cannot do. So that means the insurance companies are putting the constraints. Well, that's only one. That's only one. And Medicare. The insurance companies, the government, the, if they are have any kind of hospital affiliation, uh, the state boards, the regulating commissions, all of these things are basically getting in the way of a doctor doing his job or her job anymore. But how, I don't understand. Do they fine them if they go over a time limit? Is that F I N E? F I N D? F I N E, fine them. How yeah. does the state and local government control that? that well, the state and local government um, aren't necessarily involved unless there is a complaint. However, the federal government, when we're talking uh, in this population, when we're talking about Medicare, the federal government has very tight guidelines. If I showed you, I wish I would have brought it today, the actual code in Medicare about what that patient's treatment must entail, which, um, and I'm very, very (coughs) vaguely paraphrasing this, it can have nothing to do with getting that patient better. I actually have the 
whatever it's called in legal terms, the subsection of the Medicare uh, regulations that basically say this is only about emergency crisis care management. We will not reimburse anything that is designed to improve the quality of life or prevent any type of disease process or get this person to a point where they don't have a disease process. It is strictly emergency management care. And that translates especially to this audience as far as the doctor cannot r recommend things like exercise and nutrition and uh, anything designed that is not specifically coded for their disease condition and that is an accepted protocol of treating that disease condition. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute absurdity. The, um, so since this is, this is my field, so this is what I do for 40 years, uh, I've tried to understand the system as it exists right now and unfortunately um, the existence of what goes on in the United States is countercurrent to what other countries are doing in the world uh, for patients, for caregiving, uh, for loved ones. Uh, it goes against the grain of good, modern, evidence-based medicine. Business took over medicine uh, a long time ago, probably 20 to 30 years. Uh, they came up with a game plan, uh, they graduated from their great business schools, and they figured out how they were going to manipulate a system to scrape off as much money as they possibly could uh, to uh, ensure they made their profits. Uh, now everything that goes on in medicine is based on profit. Uh, and uh, the time factor that we talked about in the very beginning, uh, that factor has shrunk to where if you see your doctor for 10 to 15 minutes, most of the 10 to 15 minutes are there for them to fill out the computer uh, like Dr. Palucky was saying, to give the check marks to substantiate the visit. Um, rarely is it uh, for preventiveness. Uh, if, you, if it's an emergency, a problem, you get credit for it. But if it is not, uh, you, you don't, and you could be dinged and not get paid for that. There are now, though, is some counseling, and you mentioned nutrition and things like that. Yeah, there's, that, that's not paid for. Uh, but end-of-life care, uh, that counseling is. So that's really the only one they have allowed us to bill for uh, in, a, in a logical way to help some quality of life for certain patients. But overall, the system has changed uh, <coughs> uh, in a terrible way uh, to where uh, for some of my elder patients, uh, it takes them five minutes to get their, their coat off, their jacket off, their sweater off. Uh, and some of them have a list, but, you know, there might be two or three or five, uh, but, you know, they can't get through the list. Uh, so, and they have to make another <coughs> appointment, and they have to get to the doctor's office. Uh, so uh, the system right now uh, should change. It, 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 it won't change uh, because how things are set up, and nobody, uh, especially relative to uh, those in my profession, are complaining about it enough. We complain about it on the show. Right. But this is you know, the one place. This is the one place. And, you know, I, I think we, we have to be proud of the fact that we have uh, brought some of this forward. Uh, but no one and nowhere, well, the, there are a few doctor groups in the United States that are battling. Uh, but for the most part, uh, most <coughs> people have just hung up uh, their cleats and said, we're not going to do this. We're going to keep our job. We're going to pay our mortgage. We're going to uh, pay, m pay off our medical student loans. We're going to raise our families, buy our homes. Those are all good things that they should be doing. But because uh, somebody is dangling their contract, <laughs> doctor's contract, over their heads, they will just succumb to that pressure and not do what they need to do to practice good medicine. Absolutely. They can lose their hospital privileges. They can lose their license. They can lose their malpractice insurance if they don't play the game. Mm -hmm. And so where do we find those doctors? And, you know, it's hard. I think uh, concierge medicine, uh, and m most people do not know what concierge medicine is, but uh, my colleague, Dr. Terrazino, is a concierge physician. What He's, does that he is, mean? He is excellent. It means that you pay a, you pay a fee. And I, 
uh, you pay a fee, an extra fee, beyond and above your insurance or your Medicare, and um, he he has a cell phone, and you have access to to Dr. Terrazino uh, 24 hours a day. When you come into the office, you get more time uh, with him. I mean, it's a totally different construct. But of course, you know, I I think that this kind of medicine, uh, many elements of it, are, is great for those patients who can afford it. But not every not everybody can, and that's the the sad part. People, those people who like myself who are in private practice, not necessarily concierge and seeing patients who pay more, but those patients who are just have Medicare and insurance. I see those patients, but you know I'm not relegated to those 15 minutes. I get to see patients longer, and I have, uh, you know, I have made diagnoses that in a half an hour period that you know, would not have been made and were not made on patients who were in the hospital suffering, having a problem, and as a result were discharged in their, that magic four-day time period, and they were discharged home without a true diagnosis being made that was a threat, a threat to their welfare and their health. Uh, yet they went home, and then when they came to the office in follow-up to see us, um, a diagnosis was made, and, and the problems were fixed. That's what happened with Russ. Mm -hmm. He went into the hospital the first time for three days. They discharged him. Mm -hmm. he, he cannot stay longer. Mm -hmm. Right. And then a f couple of three months later, he was back in there and stayed in there until he passed away, and that was five weeks, mm -hmm. treating him for something that should have been treated to begin with. So the system needs to be improved, but it's, you know, the, the, those who would carry those banners and, and write those letters and uh, complain to, uh, in the public's eye, just aren't there. They're just well, afraid. They're afraid, like Dr. Pilecki said, they're afraid they're going to lose their contracts, lose their jobs, uh, be dismissed from hospital staff. Um, they're afraid. Yeah. Well, what, ha what happens with you? Because you are a home visiting doctor. Mm -hmm. Do you see doctor? Do you see patients in your office? Mm -hmm. You yeah, do. I, I see patients in the office, and I see patients <coughs> at home. But uh, you know, I was. But you prefer to do it at home, don't you? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, you can get a big, a better picture of oh, living conditions and all kinds of things mm -hmm. that possibly may contribute to the problem the patient is having. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm able to <coughs> walk into people's homes and doing a house call and, and see what their lives were in the past and what their lives are in the present and what their lives can be for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, what we need to do for, for uh, uh, older adults in, in the United States is allow them to age in place allow them to age at home. But in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to do house calls. We have to have nurses uh, and other medical professionals being able to go to the homes and be paid for it and take care of our patient, keep them out of the hospital setting. Mm -hmm. I know we can do that. Well, I appreciate your optimism. I've taken a completely different strategy because I'm much more cynical about the whole situation. <laughs> Uh, we, are, we have created a telemedicine program, mm -hmm. a artificially intelligent, automated telemedicine program for our patient base cool. that once we have established what is appropriate for that patient, they can spend minimal time coming to see me and from the comfort of their home, they can start a program on the most appropriate exercises, whatever that means for them, whether it's even if they're not able to walk, we have something available for them. The most appropriate nutritional profile, whatever that means to them, because um, personally, I, I have a slow thyroid and a mild de eating disorder. So I've been on every yo-yo diet, weight lost and found program there is out there, and I've come to the realization that there is no one-size-fits-all answer for anybody out no, there. that's true. Especially when it comes to maintaining, which is the key word, maintaining a healthy weight. So 
we have developed programs. Um, you, this will be commonplace probably in five, six years from now, but I've bitten the bullet, made the investment, had the AI created for me, had the programs made up, <coughs> and uh, we are going live with it That's by great. the end of the month. It will be the future of um, the overwhelming majority of medicine will be done in the person's home, mm -hmm. regardless of whether insurance is going to pay for it, because I don't know. I, I never hold my breath on that one. Or whether <coughs> physicians are going to make house call because Dr. Dorio is a very rare species. That's very true. So uh, we've true. we've <coughs> taken it a completely different direction. I believe this is the future. This is the way that things have to go, because you, I, I have no faith in the system. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, well, and I, we, I think we we agree with that pessimism. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs that we are facing now in, in this country, and you know I, I'm sorry, but uh, folks out there. Um, you're not hearing the, the stampede coming in your direction. Uh, you are going to be crushed by the onset, and it's already started. And, um, you know, the, the care, the, w we practice by evidence-based medicine, and we look at numbers, statistics, all of that, and all the big-time numbers um, reveal that we are not getting good health care in this country, especially for the cost and the money that is being put in. But nobody is raising up and Democrats or Republicans or anywhere, you know, they talk about one big giant banner of, of uh, Medicare for all, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, but, so you this know, is that's, that's so far beyond politics. So it doesn't matter exactly. whether you are <coughs> liberal or conservative it has absolutely no play on it because both sides are bought by the same people. Yep. It doesn't matter whatsoever. And um, th so thinking that, well, we just need change in Washington or we just need change in Sacramento is all just this puppet show that they put on every four years and it has nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because when I was growing up, the doctors came to the home. Mm -hmm. I remember having, when I had whooping cough, mm -hmm. Dr. Lobo, and he was from India. Mm -hmm. And I loved him. He was such a nice person. But he would come in I'd be lying in bed, and he'd check me, you know, my chest and all of the other things that they did. And he told me, he said, you have to stay in bed for a little while longer. And I can remember saying, but I don't want to. I want to go out and play. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you're not ready. You're not well enough to go out and play yet. He said, I'll let you know when. But mm -hmm. I loved him. He was such a nice guy. And, and we, had doctor. we had Dr. Stone who did <coughs> a house call in New York. And he came to our place. I remember I was three, four years old, and here this doctor was coming to our home. You know, and we loved the fact that we had a house call. You know, yeah. and that, that probably, I'm sure, impacted, you know, my direction that it, it took me for what I do now. But Oh, I'm sure it did. You know, I, I think it's, it's <coughs> not something that should be lost. It is really something that is invaluable, and the th idea of it, uh, it should be contagious, but it's absolutely not. In, in the interim, whether that is ever going to be a reality or not, we now have the technology mm -hmm. where you don't have to physically be there to be there. Mm -hmm. You can be wherever. You, I, I can practice. I have patients that I have never physically encountered before. I'm medical director for functional uh, – for hundreds, let's just say hundreds of functional medicine practitioners in America. And that means that I am theoretically treating thousands of patients every single day. And I've never seen any of them. Mm -hmm. But my intermediates have, and they're sharing their information yeah. Asking the right questions is the most important thing. Getting to the bottom of what is not functioning properly, more importantly than chasing the dragon of uh, this <coughs> symptom, try this, this symptom, try that, this symptom, try this. I believe that creates a debt that can never be repaid mm -hmm. it, because it, it comes, treating symptoms is like predatory lending. 
it never addresses the functionality disorder that the symptom is just the alarm of. That's true. And if you go around <clears throat> taking the batteries out of smoke detectors just because they keep going off all over your house, you're going to burn down. But that's, that is the way true. the system is designed right now. That is the way that the medical Medicare rules are set up. And that's the only thing they'll pay for. Then how? what can we do to go about changing that? Or you can't. Is there anything? I, I'm telling you right now, okay. I, I appreciate Dr. Dorio's uh, optimism. optimism about the situation. I, I do not share it. I'm, I'm not here to say that we're going to change the system okay. at all. What we do is like what I believe, what I feel is the only answer, and that is if the system's broke, work outside of the system because that is as far as i'm concerned the only answer that is realistic find a way that it is realistically financially feasible for people to receive the care that they need and that's where technology comes in okay. i have to be okay. very very careful with my time and with my availability so there is technology to take the place of all that stuff that I just can't do. I can't do on one person. I'm treating thousands of people a day, but it's all virtual. Interesting, but we need to take a break, and let's continue this when we come back. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220, KHTS. You already know Salt Creek Grill has the best food in our valley. Well, now you can have Salt Creek's gourmet meals catered to your event. I'm Greg Amsler, owner of Salt Creek Grill. I'd like to introduce you to a new level of catering, featuring our catering director, Tamara Levine. Salt Creek Grill creates memorable experiences, which leaves our clients and guests with a sense of awe and excitement. From menu development to picturesque presentation, you'll enjoy culinary excellence and creative catering. Salt Creek Grill, a new level of catering. If you're tired of your nail polish chipping a day or two after an expensive manicure, then you'll love the gel nail polish manicure now offered by Anne. Anne is a licensed manicure serving the Santa Clarita Valley in Canyon Country for over 15 years. And now she's offering the gel manicure that lasts without shipping for up to two weeks. Log on to hometownstation.com for details on how to get an amazing deal on gel nails by Ann on Restaurant Row or call Ann at 250-8340. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one advanced audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO, Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220, FM 98.1, KHTS. And we're speaking with Dr. Thomas Pilecki. And let's continue the conversation we were having before. Sure. <laughs> the, the, the frustrating conversation. Yes. Yeah, I don't want, I you say. know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I just don't trust the <laughs> system Downer, anymore. Yeah. I don't think it's, uh, I don't hold out much hope for things changing for the better. Um, ex unless you're willing to uh, get out and lay some new track. Because the, the train that is healthcare in this country uh, has sailed. <laughs> the train has sailed, and there is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's irreparably damaged. Mm -hmm. 
It is it is just not going to be certainly not from the politicians who are paid for by the pharmaceutical companies Big who are pharma. lobbied by uh, it, the all of and I, it's just I don't want to even spend any more time on it. <laughs> I, it thinking that uh, any of the stuff that you see on TV is real is um, a mistake. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's an, it's absolutely absurd. So your question before, what can we do about it? Well, you can vote with your wallet. Vote with my wallet. Yes. Meaning what? Meaning spend money on improving your health, which has the best return on investment out there. That's true. Uh, the, the Surgeon General that was tapped to create a national health care system for this country was given amazing resources to start trying to figure this stuff out. He did an extensive study and he compiled it all as far as what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And none of it <laughs> made it into the system. I mean, none of it. It was That's purely, funny. purely prevention, purely. He said every dollar that is spent on prevention, and this was 20 years ago now, give or take, nearly mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Uh, <coughs> every dollar spent on prevention has a $14 return on investment. Mm -hmm. So that's old numbers. Now it would probably be more in the range of $25 because healthcare costs have skyrocketed in the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do that is what we talk about on this show, that is nutrition, focusing on what nutrition means to you as an individual instead of just going on the latest fad diet or taking the latest supplements that are being pushed by questionable sources with questionable quality control and then saying that well the only way to get real fish oil is if you buy the pharmaceutical grade fish oil that is now owned by a major pharmaceutical company everything else is not real yeah 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 so it gets out of control real easy and gets real ugly real easy however you need some help because it, I am a total geek. I spend obscene amounts of time researching online, and it's hard for me to make sense of all of it. So asking the average individual to make the right choices is um, a very daunting task, especially when most of the most popular things are based on marketing, or charisma, or some kind of sellability instead of real science anymore. Well, I buy my supplements from you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Ego, God's gift to whatever. No, but you've done research I've on it. I've done an obscene amount of research. Yes. And the, uh, here's, here's the acid test for me. Nothing winds up on my shelf if it didn't work for me personally yep. because I don't trust most research, especially when it's research based on trying to sell me something. I need to see it myself. I need to, it's got to first of all make logical sense. I actually paid attention in biochemistry and I can tell you that most doctors have not because when I hear Medical doctors who have been out in the field for 25 years tell me that every energy pathway starts from carbohydrates. I'm like, wait, do you, do you remember the Krebs cycle? It's not just a test question. None of that is carbohydrate. It's all beta oxidation. It's all coming from either a protein or most likely a fatty acid, and those are the components Carbohydrates are only stress fuel. And if you tell me that you're concerned about the carbohydrates on an individual and you're telling me that it's the only energy pathway available, 
I really question your idea about the way things work. Well, what do you mean stress? How, how is that okay. connected? So uh, real quick, <clears throat> real basic biochemistry. The pathway that generates energy that is carbohydrate-based happens outside of the mitochondria. It happens in the goop that the cell is made of. Mm -hmm. It is designed for emergency situations where you can't get enough oxygen into the system in order to process proteins or fats as fuels. As long as there's enough oxygen to fuel the mitochondria, to fuel the process that people who have been through biochemistry know as the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, that is an, you have to have enough oxygen in order to make that cycle work. So without oxygen, which means you're either running for your life or fighting for your life, we have an emergency system that can run without oxygen, and that is burning sugar. But it's a little dirty, and it's a, a anaerobic, so the byproduct is poison. Ooh. The byproduct <coughs> is an acid that will tear up pretty much anything it comes in contact with. So without oxygen, you get real toxic real qu quick. Now, if you focus primarily on carbohydrates as your primary source of fuel and you believe that that is the only way that you're going to get fuel into the system which is just happens to be very dominant in the standard american diet which is sad <laughs> standard american diet mm -hmm. very heavy on the carbohydrates you're going to run into some problems as we see in our s national statistics. But you have to have protein in there. You have to have some protein in there. You don't have to have a whole lot of protein. But you, and not all carbohydrates are bad. When you, unfortunately, <coughs> there's, true. everybody gets lumped in. So vegetables are mostly carbohydrates. Some proteins and some, some vegetables are really the best kinds of fats too, but mostly it's carbohydrate. However, because there's a lot of fiber, because there's a lot of collateral nutrition, vegetables are still the best bet. So even though that is carbohydrate best. Okay, so the difference is... Um, Let's pick any, okay, let's, let's take corn. I'm not even going to get into whether it's organic or whether it's GMO or any of that stuff. Let's just <coughs> take corn. Now, it's one thing to eat corn. It's another thing to eat a corn flake. Completely different nutritional mm -hmm. profile. <coughs> yes, I understand that. So the more processed a plant becomes the less nutritionally valuable it becomes and the more problematic it becomes once it hits your metabolism. So these are the things like, oh, well, you need 14 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, which translates into something that nobody is going to do. No. And so that gets shifted into the category of, well, you should eat more grains. What? So that is just bad science. Just bad science. But it's always advertised. You need more grains. Well, that's because <coughs> you, you, this country was built. This was the bread box of America, of uh, you know, the of the world. So for many, 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 many decades, a lot of money was made and pushed around by the grains industry. Still is. It still yeah, is. It's, I suppose so it's the interesting thing is <coughs> now the food industry is owned by 
the people who make herbicides, pesticides, the poison companies. So I'm not kidding. And guess what? Those poison companies not only own the food industry, they own the drugs too. All of these companies that we now know as big pharma got their start in concentration camps in Germany. Wow. Got established there. And they've been hired to take care of the food industry in this country and the drug industry in this country. At the Nuremberg trials where they were hanging people for crimes against humanity, the prosecution had some of these big pharma reps there. They weren't big pharma yet. They were just drug companies or whatever. I said, we let these guys go. It's like we had Hitler here and we let him go. But instead of prosecuting them, they were brought here, invited here, to set up our drug industry. I don't even know what to say to that. Every single one of them has been caught time and time again creating what in any other industry would be a crime against humanity, mm -hmm. and they just get a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Mm. That's very true. Just going very back, true. though, for our listeners, <coughs> you know, we earlier talked about how uh, the system is broken and those our patients and our community suffers. How, what are the ways that we might be able to educate our listeners to figure out how they can, for what we have, for the system we have, and not giving up on it, but yet knowing that uh, our seniors are, are up against the wall sometimes. You know, we, we talk about saying to them, we have to, we want you to be preventative. So you mentioned nutrition, but sure. you know, we want them to be, to exercise. We want them to avoid alcohol and smoking. And We'd love know. all of that. The mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the answer. I'm still working on that one mm -hmm. um, because I have dear friends who I see every day who say, oh, I need to come see you. I need to come see you. I fell. I did this. I don't. I'm like, okay, great. You know, you, we can make an appointment. No, I'll get in this week. I'll get in this. I don't see him. Next week I see him in another social event. Oh, I, need, I really need to come see you. I need, I need, you know, I've, I've got this, my, all this, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I can schedule you right on the phone. I'm totally virtual now, you know. I, I can do this all. Uh, you know, no, 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 I'll, I'll get in, I'll get in, I'll get in. So th this is how you get to the point because well, I'm in my mid-50s and some of my friends are in my mid-60s. We're seniors, this is how people only live to 75 or 70. What's it dropped down to? 76 now? 77? <coughs> it was? I don't know. It's been going down year after year. Three well, mine's ago. going up. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> are. You up. are exceptional. <laughs> you're well, you're my patient, so <laughs> there you go. That's true. But <laughs> the <laughs> average has been dropping in this country for several years. And I don't think anybody really cares. Not too much, at least. It's and it's not real to anybody until, you know, their ha heart stops beating or until half their face or half their body goes limp and numb. Uh, and their quality uh, of life is being affected. Yeah, so I get, the, you know, it took me a real, real long time to figure this out, but I look at it like, my experience with IT, which means technology, mm -hmm. inner, 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 you know, something goes wrong with my computer. I'm like, oh, I, can't, I, uh, I can't be bothered with this. And, you know, I make a call. Somebody come in and fix this. I can't. I don't have the time to go through the learning curve in order to fix this problem. I just want somebody to come in and fix this. And fix it. I can't be bothered with it. When I came to that realization about this is how I feel about IT, I realized this is how most people feel about their health. They wow. can't be bothered with it. 
They don't want to know. They just expect it to work without them having to put anything into it. And they can only, only pay attention to it when something goes horribly wrong. And then they expect someone else to come in and fix everything. Now, I know that's insane. But this is what we have been conditioned to believe health is in this country. Mm -hmm. And that permeates through the whole system, through the whole process. And it's not by accident. It is by design because when you get to that point, when you get to that point where it is an absolute fatal catastrophe, you're willing to pay anything to make it right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because some of the medications that were taken on a regular basis, mine included, they're now finding out that, ooh, they've got this bad uh, side, side effect. effect. This bad side I hate to tell you, Barbara, uh, they're not just finding out. They knew. They knew, but now they're they having knew to when the drug was being <laughs> initially put through its initial trials. They already knew all of that. Yes, I know, because I had a bad side effect from taking a specific medication for six years. Mm -hmm. Once a week shot, I ended up with cancer. Yeah, it was a byproduct. Yeah, it wasn't a, a side effect like nausea, vomiting, dizziness, no. a rash. No. This was cancer. Cancer. Yeah. Big difference. That's a huge That's side effect. Right. And but they knew it. Yeah. The they company knew it. Knew it. It's they on knew the it. product. They knew it, but now they're beginning, they're having to advertise it. That, oh, well, they're this trying is a to possible. change that law, too. Oh, they're goodness. trying to take all those insane things at the end of all of these commercials they're trying to make that yeah. all go away mm -hmm. i saw that yesterday yeah. uh, what can we do what we can do beings? is um well the last person that really talked to that, that had some kind of power in order to change this um got shot in the head so i got to be careful honestly um what we can do is start talking to the kids about what real health looks like it may be too late for the overwhelming majority of these uh, people listening to this show and you have to accept that i'm i don't know how i feel about that but i do know that what you ingrain in a six-year-old will carry through for the rest of their lives. Trying to change what you've been doing for the past 60, 70, 80 years, um, I'm not as optimistic about. I'm, I'm very glad that my kids and grandkids and great-grandkids are eating nutritionally. And I think I have had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, kids do get sick. I mean, once they're in kindergarten and around other kids, they're going to get sick. And well, I, I, do I don't want to get into that because that's a whole big thing in this yes, state where true. all of our rights just got taken away with no recourse whatsoever as far as uh, kids in schools in this state in particular. And mm -hmm. it's it's ridiculous. I believe this will be an epidemic of very serious uh, complications in the not too distant future. Well, I think we need to take a break, but let's continue this when we come back. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, ninety-eight point one FM, AM twelve twenty. KHTS. Your building sign is essential to getting customers to your location. Feathers can help you get your business noticed. Feathers, now in a new larger space with plenty of parking. They walk you through each phase of your project with special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will provide you with a sign that you can be proud of. Your sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Visit Feathers online at feathersigns.com or go to Feathers' brand new bigger location at 26017 Huntington Drive off Rye Canyon or call 298-9442. 
The Santa Clarita Artists Association is celebrating our 30th anniversary at the Hyatt Regency Friday, November 1st. This year, there's a free art show from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. filled with multiple art demonstrations, musical entertainment, a fine art exhibition, silent auction, jewelry booths, and more in the Grand Ballroom. The ticketed gala begins at 5 with entertainment by Lance Allen, a live auction led by Councilman Bob Keller, followed by our Art Awards Ceremony. Purchase tickets for only $25 at SantaClaritaArtist.org. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. What if you could wake up without the burden of owing over $10,000 in taxes to the IRS or state? Call the trusted name in tax resolution, Anthem Tax Services, 866-630-2694. With over 30 years of experience in tax preparation and tax law, we are ready to negotiate your tax debt and reach a settlement that makes sense for you. Anthem saved me nearly $17,000 and settled my debt with the IRS for just $100. Call 866-630-2694. We are the only company that is confident enough in our services to offer a 100% money-back guarantee if we can't put you in a better position than where you started. All you need to do is call for a free consultation. 866-630-2694. You may even qualify to save up to 99% off your tax debt. Call Anthem today and we'll also take care of your tax case study for free, saving you hundreds of dollars. 866-630-2694. 866-630-2694. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio. On your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220, KHTS. And let's continue our conversation, Dr. Bartadecki. Dr. what? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Dr. Sure. Polacki. Two Ps. There you go. Two Ps. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. So, all right. That's the end of the doom and gloom hour. We are now into <laughs> what can we do about this? What yes. can we spin this up to? And I believe that the answer uh, will have to be technology-based, will have to be virtual, will have to be telemedicine where people can get a device for a, mine. The one that I wear is about $100. It is tied into my AI. It is constantly monitoring my heart rate, my breathing patterns, my sleep cycle, and with a very little bit of data entry, I can have a breakdown of every type, for all the way from the macronutrients, which means how much protein, how much fat, how much carbohydrate, all the way down to the micronutrient profile uh, with just typing in, okay, I'm having a, uh, a egg salad sandwich from this restaurant. And then it'll give you a couple of options of, you know, the <coughs> portion, the size, that kind of thing, what kind of condiments, all of that. And you just type it into a phone or a device if you're able to do something like that. My phone, I can talk into and it is smart enough to know. So I don't do a whole lot of time typing on the phone anymore. I've set mine up and the uh, technology is pretty good these days where it rarely gets it wrong. I just talk right into it and boom, I'm good to go. I just tell the phone what I'm eating and it goes into the system and it gives a breakdown. So I can track my nutrition I can track my sleep, I can track my aerobic activity, I can track how much uh, ac physical exercise, how many steps I've taken in a day, and it's all there, it's all virtual. It, I, I can see a better profile of what I am doing to take the right steps in my health, how much water I'm taking in, 
uh, it will monitor my weight and my body. If you get a scale, this device doesn't do it, but the scale that I have that is tied to this advice, uh, d this device, it measures body composition, my um, fat and my muscle mass and my water composition. And with that data set, you can monitor somebody's quality of life when it comes to the most important vital statistics okay. better than any other system. And it's 24-7. Okay. You just have to recharge it yes, once in a but while. You, you may be able to see your patients and they can converse with you, but how are you going to adjust them? Oh, that, no that aspect that, of it? That you is, cannot do that. No, that is something different. <laughs> We have answers to just about everything except for that part of it. So there is technology. Um, w you've witnessed some of it, that thing that yes. I tap your neck with. Yes. We can train people how to do it virtually. Mm -hmm. So with a small investment of getting that device, with a small learning curve mm -hmm. of how to find a spot, where to press, and you just pull a trigger, and boom, it's done. Mm. That's where I am going with this. Mm -hmm. I plan on being completely virtual uh, in the not-too-distant future. So you're not going to be seeing patients anymore then? Well, I think I may always see patients just because I grew up in that era where mm. I believe that is still a critical part of being a doctor. Well, it, it, mm. it will be for me. <laughs> I understand. Because I'm, I'm not going to be able to use that machine and fiddle uh, around finding all kinds I'll of understand. stuff. I understand. I'll lend you my robot. There you go. <laughs> so no, just, I'd yeah, rather what, come What is in. your virtual number, <clears throat> phone number? Oh, <laughs> my actual phone number is 661-753-9340. I'll say that slower again because everybody talks way too fast when they give a phone number. It is 661-753-9340, and that's answered all the time. Terrific. Great. Thanks for being on the show again today. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care and Advanced Audiology. Listen to us next week on the Doom and Gloom Hour. I mean the, I mean the se Senior Hour. <laughs> Go enhance your quality of life. <laughs>